How you doing guys? So today's video is going to be on installing suspension on Audi TT Mark 1 Quattro. Uh, the front of the system is the same as on a front wheel drive, the rear is different. Uh, so this is Quattro only for this video. So let's have a look at what we've got to fit. So we've got some IBAC springs. I believe these are either 30 or 40 mil lowering. We've got some new Bilstein shocks. We've got some new OEM top mounts and some new bearings and everything else, everything else from the existing suspension will transfer over, not a problem. Now, if you're just doing springs and you're keeping on your old shocks, no problem. This, this video will still be relevant to you. If you're fitting coilovers, you know, there'll be a lot that it will be the same with fitting coilovers for this video as well but obviously the assembly of the coilover system itself will be different across a few of the designs it does vary slightly so yeah specific information from your manufacturer for that but the process of taking it apart and putting it back together uh, this should all be useful for you as well guys little secret for you it turns out if you subscribe to the channel santa claus is definitely going to come and empty his sack on christmas eve for you so make sure you do so as you can see, I've already got the car up in the air for this one because I was actually doing the uh, the downpipe and decat um, yesterday and then we ran out of light. So I was just thought I'll come back today and do the suspension. But so I've left a few things undone. So we're going to want to undo the bottom ball joint. You can either undo these three for the wishbone here or this top one here, but I'm going to undo this one. We're going to want to undo the drop link. Now it actually makes sense to undo the drop link from the top position here because we're going to be taking the strut out but since i've already undone it here for what i was doing i can keep it at that if you've got the headlight level sensor we want to remove it so uh, because we're going to be basically putting pressure on the arm putting it quite low to get the hub past there um, and that just puts strain on this so it's better to just undo that and then we're also going to be undoing this main strut bolt here which is just an 18 mil both sides and once all those are undone uh, that's pretty much everything that has to be disassembled at the front end apart from the top itself so here is my pro top tip for you undo the top mount before you actually jack the car up so to replicate that i've put the trailer jack underneath the the wishbone jacked it up to put pressure on it but i'm going to show you why if undoing this i use a buzz gun 21 mil onto there okay uh you can use uh uh, a swan neck spanner and a hex key in the top and I'm just going to buzz it off now the top tip is we want to pre undo this one and then do it back up reasoning behind that is quite simple when there's not much pressure on it you can just end up spinning the internal shaft when you're using the buzz gun because there's not enough pressure against it to allow the nut to break away. And if your gun's nice and powerful like mine is, it just doesn't stand a chance. So with the spring pressure, the weight of the car, it just adds that added pressure which allows the nut to have enough resistance for the hammer to actually do what it's supposed to do in the buzz gun uh, and actually crack that nut off. But you need to make sure that you do it back up, uh, just gently done up before you actually remove the, the assembly, otherwise your springs are gonna fly off everywhere. And we're just gonna put this on just to hold it all in place or doing the work, but just loosely like that, that's fine. Depending on what tools you've got available to you, there's a few different ways of getting the strut out of the hub. I've got, uh, I need to get this out of the van now. Um, I'm working out of a different van at the moment because the caddy has decided to have a, a catastrophic meltdown. So my tools are everywhere, but you can get one of these. So you slide it into the back of the hub, you rotate it 90 degrees and it will separate the hub. Quite useful. Or you can just smack the heck out of it with a four pound lump hammer and that will also do it. So we're gonna undo this main pinch bolt here. And then we're gonna just take this clip off here. Uh, and we're gonna take these wiring plugs going to disconnect the ABS sensor I'm going to get the wiring off the strut away from there as well and then that strut will be ready to come out and 
if the bolt itself doesn't start turning, you might be in a bit of trouble. It's probably seized in there. What tends to happen is you get a lot of rust build up down there and the bolt just gets stuck in place. So what we can do is try and break it through the rust from this side. That's it. So it's actually threading itself out of the out of it, through the rust. There we go. Pull it out. If this gets stuck, you can get a quarter inch little extension. Just tap it against the end of the bolt there and just push it through or a punch or something. Just be careful not to deform the end of the bolt. So we want to undo this. Now because the, the clip on this side is hard to get to, I just put a little screwdriver in from underneath, like so, just to push it away. And then wiggle it off, like that. This one's usually connected to the brake pad wear sensor. Let me just persuade these out of here. This can go out of the way. Now, if you're going to be using the hammer method, you'll be striking against here. So having the brake assembly on does make it awkward, but it's still doable. So it's up to you if you want to remove the caliper, two 18mm bolts there and there, and then you can get the disc off with that little retaining grub screw, get that out of the way, support the caliper um, if you're doing that. But I find that this is okay. So then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to push we're going to need this nut off here and we're going to want the wishbone separated from the hub um, and i find just a couple of swift taps with the hammer that'll separate like so so once we've got it separated it gives the hub room to drop down now especially if you've got poly bushes on your wishbones or good condition bushes, they don't flex enough to allow you to keep the hub and the wishbone together. If your bushes are knackered, then yeah, you can get away with it, but then really you need to be taking the wishbone off and doing the bushes as well. So yeah, this is just best practice. Um, so yeah, now we can either, uh, we just need to remove this clip. Like so. And then this just pulls out through the gap and then down. Right, so. So if you're using this splitter type thing, just push it in the bottom there and we need to just turn it 90 degrees and it'll open that hub up. So I'm going to put an extension on, half inch extension, so that I can do that. That's going into the hub, that's splitting the hub. And a bit of persuasion with a hammer. So you can see here, the hubs are getting caught on the ball joint, so I just need to move that over. And we're back to the hammer method, so let's show you how easy that is, anyway. I don't know how much of that you actually got to see, but yeah, so we get to that point there where the strut can come away. Let's undo this drop link fully. And there we have it, if we just undo this top nut again. And there we have it. One suspension assembly off the car. This is what we're left with. Now it's worth noting that I undo both sides at the same time. You've got to have the car level um, and have definitely have the anti-roll bar drop links are the last thing to be assembled because 
especially if you're changing the height like lowering springs and things like that as you put one back in the drop link is going to sit in a different position so you can't be doing one side up and then expecting to be able to do it easily and then do the other side so just leave the drop links until last and then that makes that easy uh, so i'm going to strip this down now and move over the bits that we need to move over you're going to need some spring compressors okay so spring compressors are essential they're going to take the tension of the spring because if we were to just undo this top bit now, the spring would want to extend to sort of about this length here. So there's a lot of energy stored in there and some it's going to go flying. It's dangerous. So you need spring compressors. And we're just going to tighten these up slightly. Don't need to do them too much. Just take enough off. I can tell that that's going to be all right now. And then we're just gonna buzz the top knot off. Notice how I'm not facing towards it, just in case something does go wrong. But there you go. See, I pressed enough that it wasn't gonna go anywhere. So, I'm gonna disassemble it. And if you were just changing your springs, then you'd just take the compressors off the old spring, put them onto the new spring, put them onto the old shock, do it back up jobs are good and but I'm going to be assembling new stuff so we're going to want to move this dust cover over and this stopper over now a good way to check if your old shocks are reusable or not just put this flat on the ground just to feel the resistance as you push this down and this should return this isn't returning so actually customers made a good decision by having new shocks doesn't want to turn easily and that's not much good so anyway we're going to also move the drop link over and then we're going to use a 10 mil to undo this bracket here because this is going to want to move over to the new strut as well and this other side really was not doing anything that it should be doing a comparison let's compress the new strut it's a lot harder to compress and it's returning and that's what gives it the damping force on the springs stops the springs just doing whatever they want this adds resistance so there you can see there's no way we'd get that top knot and bearing assembly in place without compressing the springs so that's what we've got to do and you can see the difference there so then we can put quite difficult trying to do this uh, then we can put the spring cap back on there which helps centralize the spring and then we need to get a new bearing a new mount like so so then we've just got this special nut which there you go which sits that way there which just holds that all together and I'm just going to buzz this up on the lowest setting on my gun and that's that and then once it's back on the car with the weight on it then I'll tighten it down fully and then do the same with the top but that is reassembled okay so there we have it old from the other side versus new from this side see the difference that's a shiny so let's get this on so first thing we're going to do is we're going to feed it up into the top hole and then just get this on and in position loosely Just to take the weight, that's it, a few turns. And then we need to make sure that everything's set in the right position. And then we can get the, we need to get the hub back onto the, the ball joint there, which I need two hands to do that. So let's just drop you off down here for a second. Let's see if you can see. Like 
like so. And then we get that in position there. Now, a little bit of lubrication can help with this process, but the key thing here is to make sure that this tab at the back is lined up with the, the slot in the hub. And these two tangs here should be sort of uh, perpendicular to this line here. So I know that this needs rotating ever so slightly for it to sit just right, there we go. That should be right there. That's gonna go in there nicely. So then what we can do is we can get the trolley jack underneath the ball joint and we can just apply a little bit of pressure, make sure it's sitting square. A bit more pressure, just keep adding a little bit of pressure. There we go, that made a nice reassuring sound as it started to go home. You can see that that's gonna line up nicely. See much from that angle. There we go. And now all we've got to do is not drop your phone. Is apply pressure from underneath here, and then if you put in the originals back in, these will be a lot stiffer. So we will want a hammer. Now, obviously, you can use the splitter that I used earlier to open the hub up, and that's going to make it very easy. Or with this bit of pressure, we just keep applying pressure and tap in the hub and you'll notice it just starts dropping into place you need a bit more pressure I think now some coilovers that you buy will literally just slide straight in nice and loosely A bit of a wiggle make sure it's square so a bit of lubrication would have helped this slide in a lot easier but we're about halfway there at the minute and you can see just gentle persuasion it's going in and you just keep making sure that it's lined up square so i'm just gonna get that all the way in two hand jobby we have it it's all the way in if we look straight through that hole there, none of the tab is in the way, so you'll be able to get the bolt straight through. And then we can obviously ease the pressure off, like so. So now we just need to put the main pinch bolt through, do the ball joint up, and like I say, leave the drop link till we've done the other side. Uh, plug the ABS wire back in, move that little bracket over, but that's essentially how you do the front. So let's move on to the rear. There is, one, there, there is one other thing that I need to tell you about the reassembly process, and that is that when you're doing this bottom ball joint up, easiest thing to do is again, apply pressure under here with your trolley jack, and that pushes the shaft into the hub, holds it in place, and you can do the nut up. Um, yeah, everything else is pretty straightforward, but that's just my tip on that. So at the back here, we can see I jacked up using the trailing arm, and then put the axle stand there so the trailing arm has got room to move so with a headlight level sensor set up like this we need to again undo the arm so we can either undo the bracket here or undo the top of the arm the top of the arm looks very delicate on this one in fact uh, Yeah, that is not long for this world at all, look. It's tried to be fixed in the past. Um, so I'm gonna undo it at the bottom here where it's a little bit less delicate. Um, and yeah, so we will undo this here. And then quite simply, we've just got to undo this big 21 here. The suspension as it drops, like so, just to stop the end of the thread getting damaged. Nice big bolt there, and there you go. Shocks loose, and the trailing arm is loose. Now this is where you have to sort of hope that everything's nice and loose. And in this case, it looks like it is. So 
we just need to push this down and pull the spring out which is going to be much easier said than done while I'm trying to film pushing it down with my foot oh and there we go now a heads up for you it's a good time to check whether your bushes here are free moving and you can see that these ones are and you've got the later style bushes and you haven't got to worry but these are the earlier style rose joints now if everything is a little bit tight you can get a, a pry bar in resting the gates here resting the gates the subframe to leave this whole thing down and then you'll be able to pull it down far enough to get the spring out of that gap so now we just put, need to put the the new spring in with this sort of rubber cover on the top which just helps it stop making a noise um, you've got a locator tab here which this part of the spring should sit against and that sits on the other side uh, sits on the inside on the opposite side of the car um, so yeah let's uh, let's get the new one on so we can get it roughly in place there and then we should just be able to push it in it's nearly in in place and then a bit of pressure under here that's how it sits there you go so I'm going to undo these torques around the top here and then we're going to get to the main bolt for the top of the strut there and there you go so that's a 16 mil up there Six sided sockets always advisable for stuff like this. There we go, let's get that off. And same test for the rear as the front. Oh, look, that isn't rebounding by itself. So, new shock. So at this point we only want to get the new shock in loosely like so because then we want to get the bottom bolt in loosely as well and then get it into ride position so those two bolts should only really be done up when the the wheel is at ride height under load which on the ground is really difficult obviously so what i like to do is just jack up the wheel assembly uh, into sort of its rough ride position you can mark against the the wheel measure how rough uh, where the center of the wheel should be roughly to the the arch just get it roughly in the right position just prevents putting too much preload on the bushes um, and leading to them breaking down so yeah um what you'll also find useful is if you can see this let me turn it around so we will use so the bolt's got to get through this way like this that's fine come on see how that's not lining up so then we've just got to jack it up slightly until we can get this in by hand so you can see at the minute that angle's all wrong so just a slight bit more and then I'm turning it in by hand now it's very easy if you don't do that to cross thread this and this is just a threaded hole so if you get that wrong you're in trouble then you've got to get a longer bolt and a nut the other side but that is how you do that so then we can jack under this point here load up the spring uh, and get into ride height and do them up and that's it it's as easy as that for the rear So there we have it, 30 mil lowered. So the top mounts, I've done them up while it's on the ground. You can see there is 
a small gap and that is on brand new OEM bushes that's completely normal anyway so I hope this has been useful for you uh, there's more than one way of doing this job but I've just shown you the way that I do it that you know that works for me time in time out there may be problems that you come into along the way if you do so send me a message I'll see if I can help um, but yeah, hope this has been useful. Until next time, I'll see you later. Cheers, guys.